doing today. Alright, let's go. I'm out of coffee. What's going on, JT? Chilling, chilling. No work today is what it's looking like. <clears throat> I think the wheels went down. That's what it's looking like. What's going on, Lambo? Clark. Chilling, chilling. What's today, Saturday? Yes, today is Saturday. Another day in the oil field. What's the best fleet card? Uh, what you trying to save on fuel? If you trying to save on fuel, I still recommend it is that same fuel card that I use. Speaking of fuel and fleet cards, I need to uh, renew my uh, QPN card. Y'all know I let it expire. I let it expire once I uh, got done leasing. You know, the membership is only a one-year contract for $250 for the whole year. You said, is it slow now? No, it's not slow. It's just the wheel. For our company, the wheel is down. Yeah, Nastic. I still recommend Nastic. Now, I haven't used Nastic in, in a year now. Keep in mind, I ain't bought fuel my own fuel card in a year, so I'm assuming it's, it's as good as it was back then, but you never know. Am I still training other drivers? Uh, not at the moment. I'm actually uh, going to put in my two-week notice. It's just the company is uh, <clears throat> making it difficult. It used to be we can uh, send a text message to, uh, I don't know who the person is we send a text message to. I, I don't know what their position is. But we used to be able to send a text message and request off. But... Um, now you got to come all the way to the office to uh, request off or put in until we notice anything like that. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm leaving. Yeah, I'm leaving. I'm uh, going to get a truck and uh, pour a sandbox. We don't have sandbox here. The plan was originally to uh, get a truck and lease on here. I was going to lease a trailer or oh, rent a trailer. It was a six-month, uh, let's call it a lease. It was a six-month lease minimum but the uh the price was too high man it was twenty two hundred dollars a month but uh it was just real easy to get a trailer from it was a newer trailer though of course but twenty two hundred dollars a month is just too high down in florida they only go for like seven to nine hundred a month you said do do uh pneumatics pay more yeah they do but i don't have a pneumatic i don't have a pneumatic or a blower Now, I was going to get a blower and get a pneumatic, but Sandbox, from what I'm seeing with Sandbox and how much people are grossing, it's uh, not worth me investing in a blower or the trailer at the moment. The blower itself was $8,500, that's including the install, and the pneumatic trailer was going to run me about $2,200 a, a month. And it's pretty much, from what I understand from looking at the numbers, I was pretty much going to gross the same thing as a sandbox driver at certain companies. I'm not saying all these sandbox companies are paying uh, good. Certain sandbox companies. And uh, I can give you a hint, it's not with Halliburton. You know, I'm not, we're not fucking with Halliburton, that's the problem. I know how much I'm gonna make pulling a Helen Burton sandbox. Matter of fact, I'll show y'all. Uh, Helen Burton sandbox. This is what Helen Burton sandbox looks like. Where's the camera at? Over here. See this? Looking at grossing about. Say about six thousand dollars on the gross. That's what the hella burden pulling hella burden sandboxes. So yeah, in that case, you can make more with the new matter trailer. But uh, of course, I put out a video to see who was uh, making way more than that, and obviously, I found some companies. So that's why I changed my mind. You say you made a lot of money with Halliburton. I made a lot of money with Halliburton too. 
but I made more money with other customers. Halliburton is the lowest paying customer in the oil field. Can you run teams in the oil field? Um, speaking of teams, <clears throat> me and my buddy was going to run teams down in um, South Texas. Um, it was a sandbox company. They was doing 24 hour, it was 24 hour runs, but you had to have a teammate. Uh, one driver was going to do 12, 12 hours and the other driver had to do 12 hours. And it was just non-stop loads. It was a tiny company, just got their contract. And uh, me and my partner was going to do that. But then, the minute we had talked about it, the very next day in the morning, I got that phone call from yesterday uh, about that sandbox position. And that's solo. And uh, I was like, hey, man, why not take that? You know, see, at first when I called that company, they told me they weren't hiring own operators. So, you know. You said Stevens is the lowest paying. Now, I'm not talking about the carrier. I'm talking about the customer. Stevens isn't. Stevens is a, is a carrier. They're not a customer. Halliburton is a is a customer. I don't know if Stevens is the lowest paying uh, carrier in the oil field. I'm not too sure. I know companies that 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 pay a little bit lower than Stevens. Which schools offer training for low income people for CDL? Trying to change my life. Uh, well, I was low income, I guess. Uh, which schools offer training? Uh, pretty much all of the mega carriers offer training. Uh, all you got to do is give them a call. You give them a call, fill out the application. They'll send you a, a free bus ticket out to wherever they do training. At, and they'll train you for free. Well, it's not really for free. You got to uh, uh, fill out a promissory note. As long as they ain't taking out loans. I'm not, I'm not sure how the process works anymore, but... Uh, just give one of these mega carriers a call. What state you live in? You said I got some big arms. You live in Pennsylvania? Okay, so I think Prime is over there in Pennsylvania. And I think Carlisle. Carlisle, Pennsylvania, I think. Call up Prime and... Uh, Prime will send you out to Missouri, and uh, they'll train you. They'll send you a bus ticket. They'll train you, and uh, you'll have a terminal. The terminal will be right there in Carlisle, so I will call them. Do I, have, do I ever get bored driving? No, I don't get bored at all. So you think Sandbots make the same as Pneumatic now? At certain companies, yeah, they do. I'm only grossing about $10,000 a week on the Pneumatic side. It's sandbox companies that they grossing ten thousand dollars a week too. Now they do a lot more running, way more running, but it's possible. You definitely gonna do way more miles. But like I said, it's only certain companies. I don't want y'all thinking that it's all sandbox companies. That's not the case. It's certain companies. I'm talking about out, out of a list of a hundred, maybe about five you able to do this. Uh, Kind of money on the sandbox side. We said, how many loads do I do a day? I'm averaging about two loads right now on the pneumatic side. Give me a second to idle shut down. Coming on. Why not get your own authority? I don't want to answer that question right now. There was a possibility of uh, me getting my own authority. There was two companies that I could get my authority on, and uh, I can lease trucks on to use my own authority, and they only charge 15%. But I got to have my own fuel, my own insurance, my own everything, but I can get freight through them. One of them is my company right now. And another company is a sandbox company. So that was an option. But uh, right now I don't even have enough trust to even, to even worry about it. You 
you said where can you rent a sandbox trailer from <clears throat> sandbox trailers are free whatever company you lease on to they sh the sandbox companies are free but depending on what company you go to they want to rip you off so what i mean by that my last company they was charging i think four hundred dollars a week for the for the free sandbox trailer Halliburton give uh, anybody that's pulling for Halliburton, those chassis are free to the carriers. The, it's the carriers that want to rip you off and charge for them. The, the, the trailers are absolutely for free. So depending on what company you're going to, depends on how the student tag guys feel like ripping you off that particular uh, day. You said zero to thirty, zero to thirty miles with Sumba JS 492. What is that? Pneumatic or sandbox? If it's pneumatic, that's not the lowest I've seen. The lowest I've seen is, I think, 450. Uh, no, 477 is the lowest I've seen. He says more owner operators out here than company drivers. Yeah, it is. What's the bare minimum experience someone needs to get to your kind of money? You need two years of experience unless you got your own truck then. You make it find a company that'll take you with one year of experience. But I say two years. If you did it over, how long would it take you to get to where you are? It still take two years. Said ten thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if y'all know this, but uh, I've been telling y'all that in between me and Fuck You Money, we've been telling y'all that you can uh, gross ten thousand dollars a week in the oil field for about three hundred and eighty days now. It's actually been about three hundred and eighty days. I don't know if y'all know this or not, but not only that, you know, I got paycheck videos on my channel that you can. All you gotta do is read them. You know. This is really not a secret anymore. Look, here's a check for nine thousand dollars right here. Gross to the truck. I only get twenty five percent because it's not my truck, but it looks like this. See that? It's nine thousand dollars. I got twenty five hundred from it. Can I message you back on Facebook? What's your uh, what's your username? That Facebook message is full. I don't know if y'all know that. What's your username on Facebook? I have to dig through the messages. You worried about any chemicals or health issues out here? Uh, now the oil feels a lot different than it was in uh, 2014. Uh, the 2008 oil field, uh, for the most part, you don't even need a mask anymore. You know they got silos now, and the silos filter out all the uh, all the uh, dust. So, um, plus they got sandbots now, so you don't need a mask with sandbots. You don't need a mask with silos. I mean, for the most part, all the health issues are taken care of. Now you still got some companies that do do the movers, but it's not that many of them. You know, the movers blow out all the dust from the top of it. That's the only thing you got to worry about, just those companies, or customers, I should say. But, like, for the most part, you don't even need a mask anymore. It's really no health issues. Now, you still got to need the fire-resistant clothes because they do have explosions out here from the guys that's working over there on the, uh, uh, the concrete machines and, and the mitzvahs and those explosives and all that. They still That stuff can still go up in flames now. But as far as actual breathing stuff in, that's back in 2014. Been trying to find a company out there to work for, and I got an out of service violation for my CSA score. That won't even that won't even matter out here in the oil field. Uh, what did you say your your Facebook name was? Is that your Facebook name? Gotta write it down and uh, 
Get you back after this live feed. What's better, 26% of the load or 25% to the truck? Uh, if it's out of 100%, I mean, I guess 26. Yeah, make sure it's to the, make sure it's 26 percent of the truck. Do Stevens Transport make good money out here? I don't recommend Stevens Transport. So for all y'all that's in the oil field, speaking of tra Stevens Transport. If you're in the oil field and you're somewhere near San Antonio, as y'all know, Stevens Transport got that whole area on lot pretty much. That's the cheapest rates in the oil field right now is in that area. And it's all because of Stevens Transport doing work for dirt cheap. So if you're down south and you're wondering why you ain't grossing 10000 that's the reason why. It's because Stevens Transport got the rates all the way to the ground. You got to get away from the whole area. Maybe drop down to Louisiana or come all the way up here towards West Texas. You gotta remember, it's hard to compete. It's hard to compete with drivers in the oil field that's only making, you know, $1,000 a week. You try and get to $3,000, but you got people that's doing it for $1,000. It's very hard to compete. So the only way to compete is to not be there at all. You don't have any, you don't need any experience. You just need two years, just two years of driving experience. 1845, man, I don't know about that company. I, it's not a company that I, I, I really don't recommend them, but I got a guy right now. I don't know, man. He he did five loads today, but he's an own operator. Um, I think the loads are paying, I think he said like $600. So he's doing good though. So I, I really don't know. You just got to talk to the recruiter. You know, I'm not gonna say it's a bad company. You know, you may can still make two thousand dollars at eighteen forty-five. I, you have to find somebody to work at eighteen forty-five. That's a company driver. And ask them. Do you think I'm have to run water? What do you mean you got run water? What are you talking about? I just got my CDL. Oh, you just got your CDL. I don't even recommend coming out to the oil field, unless you actually live in the oil field. I don't even recommend coming out here. Cause you going it's not it's not a lot of companies that take you maybe steven will take you out to six months you see the six months or a year but don't expect the big butts it's not really gonna happen if you got less than two years of experience the best way to try to get two or three thousand dollars is to work for an owner operator Say how's my trainees doing? Uh, how my trainees? I, I've been done with training. Training ended for me maybe. Uh, I think I stopped training about a month ago. Yeah, it's been about a month ago. I still call all these guys my trainees, but that's because that's just for YouTube purposes. You know, I don't want to say their real name on camera, so I just call them my trainees. But train training been over. For the most part, I just got paid for a majority of them. Maybe ninety percent of my trainees I got paid for. Uh, matter of fact, I think it's only one. No, it's two of them. Just two of them I need to uh, hunt down to get them to sign some paperwork so I can get paid and get up out of here. You say you met a dude in training working for 1845. His chest was pretty decent. We need a cash video like when you were starting out. It's hard for me to do cash videos, man. I don't see that when I first started, the bank was right beside my house. You know, I lived in my parents' house, and the bank was right beside my house. Now, my bank, I bank with Navy Federal Credit Union, which means my bank is a, on the military base, and I don't I don't even know. I've never been to Navy Federal Credit Union in person, so it's, it'll be very hard for me to get those videos. First, I got to hunt down the location of where, where is Navy Federal. Like, I don't even think it's anywhere in, in Texas, so very hard to do. Or I could just open up a bank with maybe a, a account with like Wells Fargo or something and do it that way. But 
I'm from Tennessee, Nashville, Nashville, Tennessee. I'm not from Memphis. I'm from Nashville. I live in Memphis, though. I saw something like that call you posted. Needed money down for insurance. I thought it was a scam. Now, it's not a scam. What they was talking about in the video, when you come out to the oil field, when you come out to the oil field, uh, all companies in the oil field have to pay insurance. They got to pay what's called well insurance. And what well insurance is, I don't even know how to explain it, so I can't tell you. But it, anytime a truck add a, add a, wait a minute, anytime a company add a truck to the well, they have to pay insurance for it. So it's usually maybe, uh, I don't know, $2,500 a truck. So all he was saying is that's the cost that I would have to pay for them to add my truck onto that particular well. That's all it is. Every company in the oil field got to pay that. Now, some companies pay it for you, of course, but for the most part, they all have to pay it. Hey, Andrew, I didn't know you could make a certain percentage of the truck or the load. I thought it was for the truck. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, you talking about how we get paid? Yeah, I get 25% of whatever the truck makes, so uh, if you go back and look at one of my paycheck videos, I'm I'm pretty sure it's still up. If you go back and look at my paycheck video, I think it's called like Andrew's Paychecks. Whatever the truck make, so meaning what I mean is, let's say each load I do, okay, I do two loads a day on average. Both of those loads pay about $700. So let's just say I do $1,400 a day, right, for seven days. At the end of the seven, plus I get detention. At the end of the seven days, they add up all that, whatever that equals, I get 25% of that. That's going to be my paycheck. You see what I'm saying? So that's what we mean when we say 25% of whatever the truck makes. You say that's a Navy Federal in Krillin, Texas. Where's that at? I'm in West Memphis, Arkansas at my company, Terminal USA Trucks. I heard USA Trucks got a good uh, lease program. I think it's just like Snyder. They got the, um, they got the load board out there, so... Um, from what I'm hearing, this company driver is doing pretty good on that lease program. How much money should I come out there with trying to get a job? I recommend about two or three thousand uh, dollars. How are you getting out here? Do you got your own car? Because if you if you plan on flying out here to Midland Airport, understand the Midland Airport. There's no there's no airport in America more expensive than Midland Airport. So you need to make sure you got the money if you plan on flying to that airport. Now, you can still get rental cars cheap there, but if you plan on buying some goddamn tickets about that airport, oh, man. Is a Class A, is a class a license hard to get? Uh, no, it's not hard at all. You just got to go to school real easy. Is $19 an hour regular pay for an oil fuel company in West Texas that offers housing? Uh, nineteen dollars an hour. Is it normal? Uh, I think the lowest they start out with is eighteen dollars, and it can go all the way up to thirty-two dollars an hour. Um, I think only water, water and crude oil is the ones that's paying hourly. Uh, it is some crude oil companies that pay you percentage-wise, but. It is the lowest. You know, I would probably look for like twenty three dollars, twenty two, you know. But uh, I think all of them pay overtime. Just call the company and just ask ask them what the uh, drivers are averaging. That's that's how you know how much you should be looking to make. For a business checking account, do you recommend going with a bank or a credit union? Uh, I prefer the credit union. I prefer the credit union for a lot of reasons. You know, if you were a bank, man, it's just too many uh, charges. Just too many charges. You know, you got to keep a certain amount of money in the bank or they're going to be charging you. They charge you to use the, um, there's a lot of charges. So small charges to add up over time. I like the credit union. But some of the best credit unions are hard to get into, too. 
But it also depends on how much money you got. You know, if you uh, if you if you got like a million dollar company, you may want to go with the bank if you're looking for funding, like a large amount of funding. The bank can be the best route in that case. Said I was right about having a certain amount of money when you come down here. Yeah, man, it's just people that came down here and I here to uh, <clears throat> help them out. You know, um, in the beginning, one guy, one guy sold his house down in Florida to come to Brady, and I don't even recommend Brady at all. And uh, <clears throat> it didn't work out too good for him. You know, um, yeah. What about bridge of transportation? Um, it's not really a company I recommend, you know, uh, <laughs> I really don't want to talk about uh, Bridge of Transportation. It's not really a company I recommend. But speaking of Bridget, we saw Black, uh, Black Mama got his truck. He's doing pretty good. We need an update on the other guy. I forgot his name, but we need an update. We need to figure out if he bought his, uh, truck and trailer also. I see, uh, Black Mama finally moving on. That's a good thing. Maybe he can come haul sandbox with me. <laughs> I'm not sure if he uh if he plans to run the medic or not. I got a job lined up for seventy five thousand plus overtime one hundred and ten k, but I don't have no experience. That sounds good to me. They gonna train you right. What's up, Blair? When you coming back? You coming back Monday? Man, when they going to lower the age? If you live in Texas, you only got to be 18 to uh, drive a truck. Now, to work on the oil field, work in the oil field, some of these companies, you got to be uh, 25 years old. I'm not even old enough to work at some of these companies. Because I'm not 25, I'm only 24. So, you know, some of them won't hire me just because of my age. Even though I got experience, but, you know, soon tie rules, you know how that go. said is it Zyrate? Zyrate show posted his numbers for Stevens not good but a way to get in for those who want to know the numbers Maurice Samri I gotta look that up let me uh let me spell out that Maurice I was driving for USA in a motor in Atlanta, and now I'm in the oil field. That plane ticket was a pretty price. I bet it was, man. I bet it was. I fly, I fly to Tennessee, man. A one way, one way plane ticket is five hundred dollars. Said nineteen dollars an hour is pretty low. I'm in Nashville. Which company should I apply to when I get my CDL? Uh, in Nashville, you got Western Express. Um. You got Western Express, you got um, another drive-in company, I don't even know the name of them. I think it's called like Millen or something like that, but uh, try Western Express since you're in Nashville. They got a headquarters right there in Nashville. They probably will train you too. Never drove a 13 speed before, only a 10 speed. How hard will it, how hard will the driving test be? Have you drove a nine speed before? If you drove a nine speed, then just drive it like a nine speed. If you know how to drive a ten speed, all you gotta do when you get in that thirteen speed truck is just look at the pattern in it. It's just a square pattern. Just it's just a square. So like with a ten speed sits gear, you gotta um, when you come to what is that one two three four when you come to fourth. And I guess you put it in fifth, you come all the way over to the left and go down. You won't do that on a 9-speed or a 13-speed. You'll just go from first gear, you'll go second, third, fourth, then you'll go back up to where first gear was. It's just a square pattern. What year truck can I bring up there to start working? Company needs newer trucks. Oh, no, no, no. It's not like, uh, it's not like... Most of the uh, driver and reefer companies out here in the oil field, they don't care what year the truck is. They, it, as long as it can pass an inspection, no one cares about the year of the truck. 
They want the money. They don't. They just want the money. That company says the drivers average about 160-ish hours bi-weekly. Thank you for the reply, Andrew. 39.5 cent per mile average between 27 and 340 miles a week. 1,000 to 1,300. That is everything. It's perfect, as you know. What's my number? Add me at social media. You on Facebook? I got a long list of people trying to add me on Facebook. I think it's up to like 300 now. We're so busy in the oil field, you know, uh, I'm busy, Golden Child busy. It's very hard for us to uh, do videos anymore. That's why almost all our videos are live, man. we just just working hard now, you know. There's not enough time to just come back in and edit videos. Like, the wheel is down right now, so I got the time. But I don't got no content because I've been working so hard. Plus, y'all know I don't got my cameras, man. You know, I used to have the GoPro cameras. I could just mount on the window and hit, hit record, but... I don't have those anymore, but I do plan to get some new cameras in about a month or two. You said, what is the oil field plug YouTube channel? He don't have a YouTube channel. He's on Facebook. How can I get better out air dry? Dominic, I didn't told you about speed on them goddamn lease roads. Yeah, guess what? So we got Dominique. We ain't going to tell what company he work at, even though we didn't say it damn near 20 times now. Dominique, a new owner operator out here, you know, he bought his truck. And came out to the oil field. I think it was his third day on the job. And uh, <clears throat> he broke down inside the damn silo at the shipper. What a way to piss the ship off than to break down on the silo. His air drive went out. Y'all already know what that's from. Dominique was speeding on the lease roads. Just like Andrew when I my shit, you know, fucked up at the last company. We already know what, what caused it. But we need to slow it down on that goddamn lease road. Put some air bags on your front axle and upgrade them shots and slow it down anyway. Drive to Houston or Dallas and fly Spirit for cheap around 40 to 100. Yeah, you can do that too. I'm in Dallas, Texas. Turned 21 in June. So now they're taking me. Yeah, for teens. Child support would take your license. If you fall behind, they will. What is the pay for a pneumatic trailer for a 700 mile trip? We don't do 700 miles in the oil field. Shout out to Anthony for a $5 donation. Somebody's asking the name of someone's company. You just loaded out of Sweetwater. Sweetwater, Texas? I've been to Sweetwater. Where the hell is Sweetwater at? Sweetwater. Is that over there by Big Springs somewhere? I'm all the way in Pecos. Is your company hiring, Cool Gang? Iberg emailed me, ran into a KLM driver yesterday, saying he made more with a KLM driver in the oil field. Are you in a Boeing 737? Nah, this is a, a truck. A semi-truck. I got a couple of companies, man. I got one up here in Odessa. It's pulling sandbox I can go to. There's one down south I can go to, and there's one up in PA. I know some of y'all, when I made that video, y'all emailed me about uh, companies over in PA. And I had my partner call one of them yesterday, but they didn't answer, so uh, we're going to call again on Monday. I would consider going to PA, mainly because I know a lot of people can't follow me because a lot of y'all don't know how to drive up and down the mountain. So that would, uh, that would keep <clears throat> a lot of y'all away. <laughs> Y'all don't know how to drive the mountains? That's crazy as hell. I didn't know that was a, a, a factor of keeping people away. Just go wherever the mountains is at and they won't even follow you. That's crazy as hell. I'm like, what, really? 
Yeah, man, people don't know how to drive mountains. They got CDL and don't know how to do the simplest shit. Yeah, um, I didn't know I was uh, not coming back to that company. See, when I left my stuff in that truck, uh, the reason I left my stuff in the truck at the last company is because I was under the impression I was going to the yard to get another truck. When I got to the yard, they didn't have any other trucks available because they had just did orientation and they filled all the trucks. And the truck was all the way up in New Mexico where it broke down. I was all the way in Odessa's. And the plane leave, the plane was leaving in like an hour or so. And it was like the only flight I could take to get home. It was during spring break, so all the hotels, rental cars, everything was sold out. All I had was this last minute flight for $500 one way. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm a company driver. Looks like the rear of a Southwest airplane cabin. Oh, you said the shipper wasn't mad at you? All right. Oh, yeah, you was at High Roller, wasn't you? Yeah, High Roller, I think they got, what, nine lanes? At first, they only had, like, two of them working, but I guess they didn't open up more. You said, what happened to fucking money? <clears throat> what happened to fucking, you, you want to know uh, what happened to fucking, fucking money is no longer in the oil field. He, uh... Yeah, he's, he's no longer in the oil field. <clears throat> That's what happened to fucking money. He's no longer in the oil field. You don't want your own truck up north. Rust issues, more cost and repairs in downtown. Yeah, I'm not going up north. Scared of the mountains. Top dollar trucking. What's good with you? No more videos. Do a plug, Jason Andrew. Thanks for the free game. I got a bad sensor again. I've been going five. You've been going five miles per hour, man. Where you at? I told you I'd come scoop you up if you need to go to the shop. My friend just blew his uh, heads up in the engine. You know, his beer right now is $10,000. I had to take him to the airport. He a goddamn mechanic making a fool of himself right there in Odessa's. And the bill right now, his bill up to ten thousand dollars. He don't know what the fuck to do. Even though he made, he been. You would think that these guys been making all this money, but uh, a lot of them spend the money that they make. So <clears throat> I gave him a ride out to the airport, and I don't. I think he's gonna let the mechanic have the damn truck. I know how to drive mountains. I live in Ohio. Uh oh, anyway. You trying to get out of the Ohio area? It's early somewhere. Are you going to move out to Texas? Uh, no, I don't plan to move to Texas. You said it's an air lead somewhere? Yeah, I know it's an air lead somewhere. It's probably a transmission air valve, man, from you speeding down the damn lease roads. <laughs> Where are you at, man? I'm in, uh, I'm in Pankers. No, I'm in Monahams. Yeah, I'm in Monahams right now. You better get used to the air leads, man. That's that's every truck is gonna have air leads, unless you got the suit and tie guys truck where they didn't did some modifications underneath the truck to keep the rust from taking out the uh, from from you know busting the air lines and shit. You need to go back to the shop and buy a new one for fifty dollars. You need a ride to the shop, cause I ain't got no motherfucking work. What shop you wanna go to? If you want to go to a shop in Odessa's, hope you got a big wallet. Said blowing heads will be a form of not checking fluid levels, especially coolant. You motivated me to get my CDL. Are you in New Mexico? Damn it, boy. I don't know any shops up in New Mexico. Mm. Yeah, I don't know any shops up in New Mexico. But if you come all the way down 285, that's Pecos. You might have to cut across the Kermit. 
going five miles. What ain't, what uh <laughs> what the damn company you work with? What 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 they say, man? They can't they ain't helping our own operators out. No, I'm not interested in the Tesla truck. Am I ever going back OTR? It's possible. Now I don't have a GPS. I uh I never had a GPS in the oil field. See, I've been running 24 hours and going five lows now. Is that right? You got you got time on the e-log clock, right? Yes, I, I sleep in the truck. I sleep right. I sleep right. Uh-oh. Heads up. See the bed up there? See? Right there? Oh, there it is. See, I sleep. I sleep. I sleep up there. Johnny gave a five dollar donation. What are the best oil field oil fields to go to? What do you mean the best oil fields? You talking about location wise or are you talking about companies? Or are you talking about states? Did I find a truck? Yeah, I've been and found a truck. I gotta quit this company before I can lease the truck on somewhere. It's a cheap shop out in Odessa. How cheap? It's only one cheap shop I know in Odessa. They charge two hundred dollars a day, no matter what you're getting done. But I highly doubt you know what that company is. Um, it's kind of a secret company that owner operators go to. It's by Walmart, if you know what I mean. I highly doubt you know what that is, though. They find a mechanic to do side work from their house. Rodney said, am I still switching companies? Oh yeah, man, I'm still switching companies. Just got my CDL two years. Now working with the pipeline company. See a lot of your videos, like to know more about PA. You live in uh, CT, what is CT? Um, Maryland, Boston, Connecticut. Is that Connecticut? What's a good truck to use in the oil field? You can use any truck in the oil field. Do you think a Tesla truck will last in the oil field? Uh, yeah, any truck will last in the oil field. Did I add you to uh, Facebook? Yeah, I'm gonna add you to Facebook after this live feed. I can't, I can't do the Facebook because I'm on my phone. Are there a lot of places there to get your truck worked on? Oh, uh, you going It's definitely shops in the oil field now. It's just, do you got a big enough wallet to afford them? That's that's what it is. It's, you got use your wallet big now because if you talking about getting the truck fixed up in the uh, Odessa or Midland, whoo. You must got some money in your pocket, right? Because them mechanics are slammed. And because they slammed, you you thinking you finna... Uh, they already can't got no no space to, to sit a goddamn truck. So, you know, for an extra $3,000, we will we can get you in a day. You know? <laughs> or you can, uh, you know, if you break down real bad, you know, my friend is a tow truck driver. He'll be happy. They'll be hard, happy to come and uh, tow you for $100 a mile, you know. Hopefully you won't be going uh, 30 miles, you know, because that'd be a big bill. You said the oil fields that are booming? Well, I would say it's booming probably in Texas. Of course, right here in Texas. Maybe up in, well, really just everywhere. You know, you got Texas, you got North Dakota, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. You got Louisiana, you got down South Texas. You got Oklahoma, which I don't know much about Oklahoma. I don't know much about them. But um, I would just call around. Call around all the states. See who pay who pays what. Of course, now, if you want to know who's going to be paying a lot of money, you just got to go where nobody wants to go. Nobody want to go up in the mountains. Nobody want to go to North Dakota. Everybody want to come here to Texas. So 
you come here to Texas, understand that it's only certain companies that you can make top dollars at. It's not a lot. It's just certain companies. Did I buy a freight line of Columbia in your video? I should have, but uh, when I seen that freight line of Columbia, I was already on my way back to the back to this uh, company. I seen it like the last two days before I was finna get on the airplane and come here. So I haven't went back. I don't know if the truck is still there. Now it's probably sold by now, but uh, if it's still there, I'm gonna swing by and check it out. I highly doubt it's still there. Though. It's probably been a month now. Are you going to the shop to get the part? Oh, okay, that's different then. Okay, I thought you were talking about the shop to get the goddamn work done. I was going to say, ooh, they finna. This got a big wallet. Hey, Dominique, if you want, I'm not sure what kind of truck you got. If you got a uh, Freightliner, well, a lot of my guys do is they um <clears throat> they use a uh, business uh, credit. I know. I know a lot of people hate that, hate that word, but uh, they go to Freightliner and they open up a business account. And they get all their parts through Freightliner for uh, a little bit less than normal pricing. But that requires a business account, and uh, it, it's going to be on business credit. I, I know a lot of people <clears throat> don't like that, you know. I use business credit to lower the cost of my operation, so. But I understand that's, that's kind of taboo up in the trucking industry. You said that was Connecticut. They got all kinds of parts there. Ever thought about pulling containers? Yeah, I did before the oil field. Uh, I was gonna pull containers right there in Memphis for dirt cheap. I'm glad I didn't do it. Uh, they was talking a dollar a mile. I was goddamn it. Hell yeah, man, sign me up. Yeah, I'm gonna make a dollar a mile like a dumbass with a lease truck. Unfortunately, my uh, PSA points was too high, so they all gave me the middle finger. I know a couple of decent mechanics in Odessa, 85 to 125 dollars an hour. You know the mechanic over there on the 338 loop? That's a good mechanic right there. Do you listen to Joe Rogan podcast? Oh, sometimes, depending on what he's talking about. From what I understand, in from what I understand, if you are allowed to turn ELD off as long as you are not moving in Texas, what does that mean? What do you mean you can turn an e-log off if you're not moving in Texas? Hey, what does that mean? You need to come out here with a tow truck. Yeah, there's plenty of people to tow now. There's plenty of people to tow. It's First, it's going to be a lot of people to tow out here in the oil field. For one thing, anybody out here buying them $20,000 trucks, they're going to be your first people you're going to get to. You're going to be towing a whole lot of people out here that bought these cash trucks at $20,000 with like a million miles on them. Those are the easiest people to tow. And it's the easiest people to charge, you know, $100 a mile to. I mean, they bought the truck cash. You would think, okay, they bought the truck cash, so they making all this profit. They ain't got no bills, so why not charge them $100 a mile for making such a dumb mistake? I mean, any truck over 700,000 miles is asking for a rebuild. I don't know if y'all know that or not. A lot of people don't know that. If you buy a truck and it's got 700,000 or more miles, be, be ready for rebuild. I don't know if y'all, it's, it's not just common sense out there. The cheapest truck to rebuild is, of course, the 60 Series in <clears throat> Detroit. OG Burn Truck Parts is a cheap place to buy parts in Texas, FY. What part of Texas? Too much DOT in Oklahoma? Hey, I've never been to Oklahoma before. ELD. What about ELD? Only thing cheaper is eBay or online. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely cheaper if you buy it online. I'm glad I stayed away from companies offering housing and etc. Seems like a catch to me. I don't recommend any company that's got housing unless you're doing crude oil. Somebody asked uh, what companies does uh, Kuyang work for. Hey, Kuyang, I called your company yesterday, but they didn't answer. Matter of fact, I called one number and it sent me to another number. I called that number and they didn't answer, so... I may just need the part 2014 Freightliner. Yeah, yeah, you definitely need. Oh, you drive a Freightliner, huh? Yep, yep. Yeah, it's cheaper to get parts, genuine parts, straight from the uh, freight, straight from Freightliner. 
You said, let me know if I'm going to come through. Man, you are all the way in New Mexico. About two, three hundred miles away. How fast your truck go? Five miles per hour? So how long is it going to take you to come down to Pegas? Or Monaghan? What is that? Five miles? You probably, uh, what did it take you, like three days? <laughs> I don't work in New Mexico no more. Not at the moment. Yeah, I seen your videos. I know who you work for. When you rolling out your truck, it's the fast. It's it's the fast to eat the snow. What? It's the fast that eat the. I don't even know what that means. Did I buy it my own truck? Now I haven't signed no paperwork for a truck yet. I'll check out your channel things. Be smart with cheap cash trucks. Yeah, yes. I try to tell a lot of people that. And uh, a lot of people buy these cash trucks. And, uh, yeah. If I buy a cash truck that cheap. Like, for example, the freight line y'all talking about, the guy wanted $16,000, right? The truck hit 800,000 miles. So I already knew I was going to have to put at least an additional $10,000 in just rebuilding the engine. I wasn't even going to bring the truck out to the oil field without first getting the rebuild done. There's no point. You know, come out here, let it break down, and now I got to pay this $3,000 tow bill to the goddamn shop for the shop to tell me I need a rebuild. That's crazy as hell. You are a company driver with a W-2, so how can you write off your plane for if you're W-2? I got an LLC. Are you anywhere close to New Mexico? No, I'm down here in Monaghan. Or the Pegas there. I'm between Pegas and Monaghan. You in New Mexico, so if you come down 285, I'm at the end of 285. That's damn near at least two or three hours away. Depending on what part. Of, are you in jail, New Mexico? What part of New Mexico are you in? You talking about cars bad? That's about two or three hours away. But I can sell the crew, uh, pulling crude oil. They don't pay them guys enough. We get paid more than the crude oil haulers. That's just it's ridiculous. I wouldn't even risk my life. Most of the trucks' reams go out. Now I haven't seen the uh, I haven't seen the Avengers movie. Yeah, I got a, I got my own LLC. Speaking of LLC, man, I had to buy a printer for the truck. <laughs> I don't even think I put out that video, but. Yeah, man, I had to buy me a printer for the truck. Uh, for, for business credit purposes, right? Uh, but, see, big ass printer. And it had to have a damn scanner on it. The bank had called me and they was like, hey, we need uh, handwritten signatures. And I was like, damn. I don't got no way to uh, print out this uh, form and sign it. So I had to go and pay $60 for a damn printer to get them handwritten um, signatures to the bank. But I got everything I want now from uh, Navy Federal Credit Union, so I am working on a uh, second account at another bank or another credit union. Need a warranty for sure. Uh, no, nah, you don't, I wouldn't say, no, nah, you don't need a warranty on the truck. You just, you need a maintenance account is what a lot of people need. Maintenance account. In Midland, jumping for oil field. Yeah, if you buy an old truck, it's best. Buy the old truck cash, and before you even lease that truck on somewhere, go ahead and put the money into it. Go ahead and put the money into the engine, the turbo, water pump, get all that stuff replaced before you even lease it on. Don't, don't. Don't just buy the truck, bring it out to the oil field and pray. You know, it's going to break down. Go ahead and get all this shit fixed. Then come out here, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Now, it's still cheaper to buy an older truck, fix it up, you know, and bring it out here. But it ain't cheaper when you buy the truck, bring it out here, and pay, you know, my friend to fucking tow you all over goddamn Odessa, the highest mechanic prices in all of the world. You know, that's crazy as hell. 
I picked up in Kermit, then take it to New Mexico. They put three laws on me every time I do two all kinds of money. Yeah, you making all kinds of money, goddammit. You goddamn got to pay it off truck. You got to pay it off 2014 truck. That's different when you got a, a truck that's paid off and it's 2014 and not 1999 or some shit. You know, it's a big difference. You're not worrying about engine problems. All you do, all you had to do is take a picture of it. Somebody take a picture of what? Is 1845 a good company for owner operators? Uh, Dominique said, uh, he said, I picked up in Kermit and then took it to New Mexico. They put three loads on me every time. That may answer your question. How's it going, Andrew? It's going real good. How much did you put in the maintenance account per week? I have no idea. Whatever you want to put in there. Whatever you want to put in there. Me, I start with my maintenance account before I even get the truck. Like when I got my quality truck, I already had ten thousand dollars in the maintenance in the maintenance account before I even leased that truck from quality. And the reason for it is, I had to ten thousand dollars down to a, a dealership called MHC Nashville, and uh, of course they declined me because. My goddamn credit score was blank. I didn't even have no credit at the time. So they declined me. I took that $10,000, put it in the savings account, went over to Quality, leased the truck, and I did it that way. And of course, that truck never broke down, so I never lost the 10 racks. I didn't even have a flat tire or anything. What credit union should I use? Uh, you just got to research credit unions and see what's best for you. I just got my CDL yesterday. How long do you think it takes me to become an owner-operator? However long it takes you to buy your equipment. A dude at my company says he put 170 per week. That could be a good number. I'm going to tell you like Casanova told me. If you get an older truck, uh, you need ten to twenty thousand dollars as fast as possible in a maintenance account. If you get a newer truck, you don't need to have that type of money as fast as possible. Well, what what do you mean by as fast as possible? Is as soon as you get your first check, dump the whole damn thing in a maintenance account because it's just a matter of time. A lot of y'all probably don't know who uh, Cass Novi is. But let's just say uh, now it's real easy to get a, ma a maintenance account, man. It's very easy. If you got a good credit, you can just go to the bank and get a credit card, you know. But then again, it deals with credit. And I don't think, no, wait a minute. That's personal credit. I don't think personal credit is so taboo in the trucking industry yet. So let's say you need a maintenance account. Uh, where can you go? If you go to PinFed, it's a credit union. It's called PinFed. And you open up a savings account because it's kind of hard to get in if you ain't in the military. But a savings account, I think they allow anybody to get in. You can apply for their credit card and they'll give you a $10,000 limit if you meet the requirements. Then what's the requirements? The requirements is you need one year, just one year of credit history. What does that mean? That means, let's say you uh, got a secure credit card. You would have had it for a year. They reported on your personal credit for a year. If that's all you got... Hey, they give you a ten thousand dollar limit on their credit card. Now, if you somebody like me that's got multiple accounts and you got a lot of credit going on, let's just say, because a lot of, a lot of people are in that situation, let's say you got uh repossessions, child support, and medical bills and all that shit on your credit card. You got to pay all that stuff down or off before you can apply for this credit card. I would say uh, six eighty and above, they should just give you the damn card. You know, minimum requirements, but. Make sure you um, pay everything below 10% that's reported on your credit card before you apply. Real easy to get that damn card at PinFed. That's personal credit. You know, like I said, I don't think that's a taboo. That's why I can get it to y'all. Like I said, it's credit now. It's not free money. It's, it's, it's credit. I know you still got to be good at juggling credit. I'm not saying... <clears throat> to go out there and rack up the damn credit card 
come back to me talking about you uh you using cash only because uh you done fucked up the credit card. You wish Casanova would make more videos. Y'all ran Casanova off YouTube. What you mean make more videos? He gone. I ran the motherfucker off. He actually pulled Casanova pulled uh from for a company that's uh close by my house. He's got a dedicated account right there uh, in Memphis. So it's by my house. When you start hiring, what are you going to be looking for? I'm a third gen truck driver, five years OTR experiences. Me? What am I going to be looking for? Or oh, anybody that want to drive a truck? <laughs> uh, if it was up to me, man, I would hire anybody three months experience or more. But it's up to the company. You know, the company made the requirements, so, and the insurance, of course. But uh, the company I'm going to, I don't know if you got to have two years of experience to hire a driver or one year or I have no idea. I, I haven't even got to that point. I bought a 2012 International Pro Star with one year warranty on it. The only problems I had was a tire blowing out. I was hauling trash to landfills. That sounds like a good deal. Uh, how much did you buy for? And does it got the match for us? If it's got the match for us, uh, that was an auction up in Missouri on uh, July. I think it was July 12th. The match forces only went for eighty five hundred dollars at the auction. They had like two hundred, three hundred thousand miles, but it was a match force engine. You know. I'm thinking about going to the auction in the future, buying a bunch of match forces for dirt cheap and uh <clears throat> doing a super tune on them, you know. Yes, I know it's a match force. I know all the problems with the match force. But I like I said, a super tune. <clears throat> and it should be alright. Andrew what lanes have been the best since driving what you know, so what's the best lanes if you're doing reefer Texas all the way up to northeast that would be a uh, real good lanes California out to the produce market of Boston or anywhere in the, just anywhere going towards northeast is good you know charge them three dollars plus a mile to go to the northeast that's how I would do it When is Cass doing another seminar? Probably never, you know. What company am I going to? I can't tell that. Is it PenFed Credit Union? Yeah, that's it, PenFed. Do I play Madden or TK, uh, 2K? Uh, man, I used to play Madden all the time, but I don't even got a PlayStation in the truck, man. I got the TV mount right here. I see the TV mount. Look, they got me a TV mount. And I never mounted a damn TV in a suit and tie guy's truck. I was always working. It was never, never enough time to play the video games. I wanted to. You know, I wanted to play the Grand Theft Auto and the, and the Call of Duty. It just wasn't enough time. Shout out to Rodney. Is Fucky Money still doing 160 miles on the interstate? Last time I checked, he was going uh, 90 miles per hour when the uh, transmission uh, blew. I'm not really sure how fast he's going now. I don't know. How this working out for him? From what I understand, he's at a. Uh, according to him, he's at a good company. He, he's running uh, Amazon, and uh, according to him, he's making six hundred dollars a day. So if y'all want to know how much fucking money he's making, he should be making. Uh, he should be making forty two hundred dollars a week now, pulling a uh, drive in with Amazon as a uh, <clears throat> company driver. Uh, is it true? What do you think? I think. Now, when he was down in Florida, he was doing the same thing for $700 a week. But I guess in Texas, they're giving him $4,200 a week. I don't. So, $700 in Florida, he come here, it's $4,200. I don't. To do the same thing, it's not making no sense. I don't, I don't know what he's talking about. Yo, I'm trying to get in the loop out here. What loop? There's a loop. The truck dealer's shops are way overpriced, MAC, etc. What auction would you go to get the truck? I was looking at uh, Richie Bros auction. Matter of fact, they got an auction on the 17th in Fort Worth, Texas. What's today? Oh, God damn it. My calendar ain't working. But on the 17th... Oh, wait a minute. I got the calendar right here. Today's the 14th. On the 17th in Fort Worth, Fort Worth Texas... They got another auction, or uh, Richie Bros auction. 
Y'all can be it online if you want to. I'm 50 years old, been driving for 2000, since 2012. You think you will hire me when you get your, yeah, I hire anybody. I came out here and got a plan. Was that Freightliner on Lamar? Yeah, it was on Lamar. Uh, I think that's Lamar. Is it Lamar? How far does Lamar go up? I think it was on Lamar. It was at a car dealership. Um, I don't know the streets like that out there in Memphis. But I think, I'm pretty sure it was Lamar. It was on Lamar all the way up towards like, I think towards Checkers. Wait, if you're a motor, does that mean you can what you can withstand space? Yeah, I'm yeah, I say not too far from Richard Bros in Fort Worth. Yeah man, when I get my uh business going, I think I'm gonna get most of my trucks out the auction. You said you need a license to buy, I have no idea. I have no idea about them auctions. I, I never been to an auction a day in my life, so I have no idea. I don't know what the requirements is. I just know what the trucks are going for. You can see the auction results. If you go to richiebros.com and go to uh, past auction results and then go to uh, tractor trailers or trucks, you can see what these trucks are going for. And you'll be like, damn. What was that? Like, for example, a 2014 Freightliner is only going for, like, $40,000 with 400,000 miles on. You're like, God damn, man, you go to the dealership, they probably want, like, 67, 54, you know, shit like that. So with that type of knowledge, I go to the dealership and be like, hey, uh, you going to take $45,000 I'm out the door. You know, what the hell wrong with y'all? I'm out the door. You gonna take it or leave it, God damn it. That's how I would do it. I would say... You know, before you go to the dealership, see what the trucks are going for in the auction. Go to the dealership, try to get it for that price. Don't don't pay the sticker price now. I pay the goddamn sticker price. All prices are negotiable. I've held my CDL since 2008. Never used them. All the major companies will pick me up. I don't want to work for them bastards. Need a small company to pick me up. You're young, want for the want to work for the mega carriers. Yeah, small companies are pretty good. Small companies in the oil field pay big butts. No, I haven't signed any paperwork for my own truck yet. Richie Bros will let you look at the trust before the auction. Try to get an oil sample that can tell you a lot about the truck. Yeah, if you go to uh, any of them auctions before the auction start, you can walk out there in the parking lot, look at the truck. You can, you can do all that. Now, I've never been to Achim before, so I don't know much about them. Go different mega carriers, get a truck. Yeah, man, I'm going to take you out to Achim one day. Uh, I know it's one on the 17th because I thought about going. Because I was supposed to be going home, but the suit and tie guys made it difficult for me to take off. So, you know, because the 17th was supposed to be my home time. And I was going to uh, rent a car to Midland. And I had to go through Fort Worth, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, the suit and tie guys told me, in order to take off now, you got to come to the terminal, fill out paperwork to take off. Why they do it that way? Because people like uh, your boy, your boy uh, that used to work here, uh, he, what they used to do is they used to just park the truck any fucking well and jump in their motherfucking car and go all over the place. And the suit and tie guys truck would be sitting empty for days upon days upon days. So, uh and then they would just tell the suit and tie guys, hey, man, I, I I was able to take off you. I, I told you I was taking off. They would do that bullshit. So now the suit and tie guys said, you have to come to the terminal and fill out paperwork to take off. Yeah, they made it. People like your boy made it uh, difficult to take off. So, you know. My friend just got fired today um, for the same thing. He uh, The whales was down. He flew to Houston. The suit and tie guys weren't having it. He, um, they called him up, and they was pretty much like, hey, uh, they was asking him on these particular dates why the truck didn't make any money. And uh, I guess he didn't give a good enough excuse, and they just fired him yesterday. So, yeah. Basically, from, like, Tuesday to Saturday, the truck made $0. Yeah. It's 
so they sent him on his way. Hey, Andrew, do you know that you can make money driving a 26 feet box truck? Not your kind of money, but new guys. Yeah, uh, with box trucks, um, I think the best thing going right now is uh, working for the uh, hospitals with box trucks, hauling uh, medicine in a refrigerated box truck. You know, go to the hospitals and see if you can get a contract. You know, you can make an easy $80,000 with a box truck. Working for the hospital. See, damn, Andrew, how the fuck you get that plug? I already know about it. That ain't the only thing you can do with a box truck, I'm just saying. It's just, there's hospitals all around where people live. Yo, Richard Bros, you have to test the trucks in person. I'm about four minutes behind on the live stream. Some have bad transmissions, etc. Yeah, anytime you go to the auction, uh, the truck is sold as is, so it, it can have anything wrong with it. You know, transmission, engine problems, DEF problems, you know, it can have whatever. Especially if you're buying the Max Forces, they probably in the auction for ten, ten thousand dollars because the DEF system then uh, destroyed the whole truck. DEF system probably took out the damn pistons in the engine and now the truck going for 8500 you know. Yeah, John, yeah, somebody always fucking things up, yeah. Yeah, John, that was, that's what I was, hold on, yeah, John, that's what I plan on doing, it's going to be close, getting the results before the auction takes place, but it can be done, yeah, yeah, also, if y'all want to know what trust they have in the auction, y'all can go on Richard Bro's website, and it'll show you uh, everything they're going to be selling in the auction, so that's what I've been looking at. You said with a box truck, try for a postal contract, $100,000 a year. That sounds good. That definitely sounds good. I know uh, David Robinson. Uh, why well, keep saying his real name? Uh, Steel Hog and TV, Ghost. I know he was uh, supposed to be buying box trucks. Uh, I'm not sure if he did it or not. I know he was supposed to be doing it. I'm not, I'm not sure if he actually did it or not. He probably did. So many opportunities with a CDL to sit as endless. Yeah, 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 I'm seeing, since coming to the oil field and meeting all these different people, uh, there's no reason anybody should be making less than $100,000 with a CDL. Now, of course, it takes time to get there, but I'm just saying, each year you progress with a CDL, the money should just keep going up. And it can go up. It definitely can go up. It costs money to go up. You know, you got to spend money to make money, but I'm just saying, it can go up. It can definitely go up. I'm in Arlington also. Arlington, Texas? I don't think I've been out that way. Arlington. I don't think I've been... Wait. I may have been looking at some houses in Arlington. Is that the... Is that the... Uh, the uh, 300 to $500,000 home area? Arlington, Texas? Sound familiar. Can you use a day cab in the oil field? Man, I thought about it. <laughs> I thought about it. Yeah, you can do it, but you're going to have to get you a hotel every night. But yeah, you can do it. Why not? You ain't even got to get the hotel, you know. You can do it like uh, how Ricky did it, man. You can lay back between both the seats, put a goddamn uh, uh, a wooden board across there. You can make it comfortable. It can work. I mean, it may be worth it for the money you're going to make. You know, plus uh, the decals are kind of cheap, too. So it can be done, you know. You can get a hotel. I don't tell you nothing about $80, $100, depending on what area you're in. Now, if you over there and got them Odessa's Midland, you know, it's kind of hard to get cheap prices over there for hotels. you had to start over, what would be your year one CDL plan for max dollars? I would have stayed with Knight if I started over again. I still would have stayed with them for a year. Because you got to get that experience in. Yeah, I thought about the goddamn day cab. I was looking at one. I was like, man, I can get this goddamn day cab right now. And goddamn, boy. <laughs>
Yeah, man, I thought about the decal. One thing I was thinking about with the decal, back by the terminal, they had um, studio apartments going for like $700 a month. And I was thinking, if I get a decal, I could have two drivers, and I could have these drivers do 12-hour shifts, you know. Have one of them stay in the apartment while the other one work. Then when it's his shift, switch them out, you know, and paying like 30 40%, you know. And it'll probably be comfortable for them, too. It'll be comfortable, you know, because they got their own apartment. Now, the apartment was small, so it really wasn't worth it. But the thought did cross my mind. You said, I seen a day cap pulling boxes, sand boxes here, and he sleeps in it, too. Hey, it can be done. Ricky did it on YouTube. He put that damn curtain across the window. See, it can be done. Man, if you got a day cab, man, hey, you can gross. The, the, the money is out here. It does not take long. You know, seven days, it'll be well worth it. If you do if you do $10,000 the first week gross, you know, let's say everything paid for, you just got paid for your and insurance, man, you probably walk away with like $8,500. That's $8,500. How much it costs to add a damn sleep onto a day cab? I don't know how much, I don't know what the price that is, but, you know. For $8,500, you can buy hotels for the rest of the year. It's where the Cowboys Stadium is. Ah, okay, okay. You look up Drive Away Bros, Ham Heart Video, you will see why. You got Facebook chasing cat. Yeah, I got Facebook. Yeah, on my Facebook, my account is called Chasing Andrew Jackson. Just put it in the search box. But uh, understand I got like 300 friend requests on there. And like, I don't know how many messages. I can't even keep up with them. And Facebook got it to where I can't even reply to people. I, it's hard for me to reply to people on uh, Facebook. I don't know what's going on. Somebody was trying to uh, send me a message today and had to screenshot it and post it on my timeline. Let them know, hey, Facebook ain't even let me reply back to you. I don't know what's going on. Are they asking you to get your own insurance to lease on? Uh, yeah, of course you gotta have your own insurance to lease on to a company. But in the video, they was talking about well insurance. You have any time or any time any of these companies out here add a truck onto the well, they have to pay what's called well insurance, and it's usually about twenty five hundred dollars per truck. So that's all the companies in the oil field is just hauling pneumatic or sand bots. So anytime they have like a company driver. They got to pay well insurance to get that truck added to a particular well. Will DOT give you more BS for sleeping in a day cab? DOT won't even know you're sleeping in a day cab. Who is Hamhawk? A Hamhawk? Is that Hamhawk? Who is that? Homemade sleepers, seven hundred a month near your terminal. Yeah, it was seven hundred a month near the terminal. Somebody asked, "Is Ku Yang an owner operator?" Yeah, Ku Yang's an owner operator. You said it depends if you got to stretch the frame or not. What's up, KMP? Don't get caught sleeping in the day cab. Uh, I guess you can get in trouble then. You say you're going to tag me on Facebook. All right, I should see it. If you if you tag me on Facebook, it should send me a notification. You said, depending on who's doing the work, it may not cost uh, too much to add a sleeper onto a day cab. said lock both doors in the day cab and log it as off duty yeah you can do it that way too and put a curtain up there and never know you're in there but then you gotta leave the truck running too so I don't know would you take two thousand dollars a week or thirty percent of each load 
Uh, depends how much the truck is grossing. Do I ever deliver to Canada? Now I don't deliver to Canada, but uh, I need to take me a plane trip, a plane trip up to Alaska to see how the oil fields is doing up there. Uh, I don't know if y'all know or not, but they are uh, drilling up in Alaska and they hiring flat sand drivers. And I want to take a plane trip up there to investigate. I need to pull me a golden child. Golden child flew to North Dakota to check it out. I need to fly to Alaska, to, you know, try it out. Not try it out, but to check it out. If the money is right, goddammit, I will go. I'll take my ass to Alaska. I don't give a damn how cold it is if the money right. I'll be a cold motherfucker out there. Hauling frats in. Is it worth it to get on with 1845? Uh, as an owner-operator, from what I'm seeing, you know, it's looking like it is worth it. I'm like 50-50 on 1845, you know, 50-50. I heard bad things and good things, and it's coming out to 50-50. I don't know. I called the recruiter, though, on one of them videos. I called the recruiter. Y'all heard what the recruiter says, 68000 so sits to 8000 a week. How about ice road trucking, nerves of steel? If the money right, goddammit, we're going to be sliding on ice. Seven and ten thousand dollars a week. What's seven and ten a week? Hey, y'all sure. hey, know they got the uh, DOT inspections safety week crap going on from the 15th to like the uh, 20 something. I meant to uh, buy a plane ticket up out of here, but unfortunately, I'm gonna be stuck out here with y'all, so um. <clears throat> My truck can't really pass the DOT inspection at the moment, and uh, the suit and tie guy's office is closed, so on Monday, I'm going to have to go down to the shop and have my truck worked on so it can pass these damn inspections. I got a lot of broken mud flap action going on on my truck, so... Shoot by Kermit, I'm at the pilot. Hey, Dominique, uh... Uh, you able to move that truck? I ain't heard from you. Right now, I'm running pneumatic. I may be running sandbox in a, uh, in about a month. I put in my application at the other company. I'm just waiting to hear back from them. I've been trying to find out about West, v West Virginia to let you know, but these... Uh-oh. But these clowns think twenty thousand dollars a month is good up here. That's five thousand a week. That's not great for the oil field. Is that what they paying up there in West Virginia? What cost a lot of stretching and adding a drop axle for heavy haul or towing? What's your favorite type of diesel engine? Cummins or Detroit or it doesn't matter. Uh, I like the C fifteen, C sixteen. N14, the Detroit Sister Series, and uh, I don't know about the uh, DD16 because the DD15 is a weak engine, you know. The DD15 is a weak engine to me. Not that I ever drove one, but um, I got friends that have the engine. And uh, it's looking like that may be the engine I may be getting. And right now I'm looking for a mechanic that can do some work on it, some modifications to it because it's such a weak engine. Cummins is cool, though. You said, am I still in the truck that's got the broken turbo? Oh, no, that was like five months ago. I'm at a whole different company. You said $20,000 a month in West Virginia and the heels are killing trucks in West Virginia. Yeah, they probably got the wrong engines out there in uh, West Virginia. If you're going to be pulling heels, uh, C-15, and the Detroit Sister Series, and the N-14 Cummins, maybe the 34 6 b that's about it. And, of course, the main thing is having them rear ends. You know, 355 rear ends are better for them mountains. Uh, 
You can't be out there with no 273s, 252, 253, whatever they are. I mean, goddamn. Ain't gonna be pulling shit. What's the difference between leasing, leasing a truck, and having your own authority? Uh, what do you mean, what's the difference? You mean, what's the difference between leasing a truck and financing? Uh, you, I don't get it. That don't make any sense. Or are you asking what's the difference between leasing onto a company and having your own carrier, motor carrier? When I worked for Swift or Warner as a new driver, uh, I wouldn't work for Warner, but I worked for Swift as long as they still starting off at 30 cents in a mile and they still got uh, the miles. Yeah, you can still make $1,000 OTR at Swift. I'd be laughing stuck at a truck stop though. Damn, somebody got a goddamn super truck in front of me. Goddamn uh, moving van company. Thirty percent truck grosses seven to ten a week or two k a week. This is heavy haul. What would you take? Oh, it's heavy haul. You said it's heavy haul. How do you? How did y'all figure that the truck grows seven to ten thousand dollars a week doing heavy haul? It's a ain't it a different load a week or y'all hauling the exact same thing? I mean two thousand dollars a week is good, but if it's heavy haul, uh, how did you come up with seven to ten? Don't y'all gotta negotiate the rates? The heels up here are bad. 550 cat engine with 18 speed. Still need a dozer to pull them up to the wheels, West Virginia. It's just killing trucks. Oh, yeah, I gotta get pulled up by a dozer and all that shit. I don't know nothing about that. I ain't the same. Y'all need, somebody need a YouTube channel out there in West Virginia. I don't know what's, I don't know anything about getting pulled by a dozer now. I don't, I don't know nothing about that. If that's the case, yeah, I need to be getting paid top dollar. You you got to get pulled by a dozer. They must got some money out there in West Virginia. Yeah, I ain't out there working for dirt cheap out here. For those that got to touch my truck, goddammit, they must got some money. That's like getting pulled by a damn tow truck. What my guy charging hundred dollars a mile, so how much half of this damn uh those that got to pull y'all? I must got some money now, y'all. Are they charging dozer fees or something? Are you just saving at this point, or do you buy things for yourself? Now, I don't buy anything. <laughs> I save all my money. I ain't bought shit. I need to buy me a car, though, so I can quit playing the rent-a-car game. I ain't bought nothing in trucking. How often are you out of the time, Andrew, and how much home time do you do? I usually try to do about two weeks at the house. Uh, how long am I out? It just depends. When I get a certain amount of money, I go home. That's basically how I do it. When I get a certain amount of money, I just go home. You know, I, I try not to do too long out here. Uh, on average, I take about a month. I do about a month's worth of work and go home. You know, this month is taking a little bit longer because uh, I need to put in my two-week notice. Oh uh, yeah, so now that work out. I told my girlfriend I was coming home this week, but uh, the student tech guys made some uh, rules. So what I may do, I may go home. If they let me go home this week, I'll probably go home, come back, and then put a two-week notice in. I work I work two more weeks, and then I'm gone. Because it's going to take me a minute to go and do the paperwork for the truck and get it uh, all together. It's not a, it's not an easy process. Yeah, man, we may have to goddamn buy me a dozer from the auction and head up there to West Virginia. They talking about they need to get pulled by a dozer. Goddamn.
Oh man, am I to charge a hundred dollars a goddamn foot? <laughs> hundred dollars a foot, goddamn. Who want to get pulled first? Yeah, we could definitely make that happen. Y'all talking about y'all need a dozer? Damn it, boy. What kind of sand are y'all pulling? We can get you up there now. Yes, we can definitely get you up there. <laughs> Shit. Get that coffee machine going is what I need. Coffee machine. Hey, Dominique, you still in here? I need to get your phone number, man. Yeah, I'm over here. Break it down. Yeah, I don't know what to do. Need to make the coffee. Here it is right there. Alright, alright, alright. Need to call Sue and Tiger Eyes and ask him why the hell I ain't got no load yet. What the fuck is going on? Well, we're gonna be down all day. One time to make this coffee, he ready to roll. Man, let's balance some coffee in here. Okay, I'm gonna get some room out of coffee. Oh, what y'all talking about? Richard Bros got them too. The oil company runs the dozers. It's free, but damn. Oh, uh, it's free out there. I oh, didn't charge y'all for the dozer yet. Yeah, if the money right, I I come out there, man. You know. I don't know nothing about that uh East Coast uh, oil field. You said I uh, think about have I thought about fin finishing uh, engineering school? Uh, now, if I was to go back to college, uh, it would be for diesel mechanics. And it would only be to learn how to rebuild engines. The reason I say that is uh, there's a, there's a, it's a channel on YouTube. Um, it's in another language, though. Uh, the guy's getting about 100,000 uh, views a video, and his channel been up for years too. It's probably the biggest YouTube channel, uh, truck driving wise. It's a huge channel. I'm a, I'm a uh, download one of his videos and upload them to my channel. But like I said, it's in a different language, so I can't tell y'all the name of the channel because it's in, it's not in Spanish. It's in uh, maybe Portuguese. I want to say, so I, I have no idea. My keyboard can't even type the words of the channel. But what they do is, uh, they buy their trucks dirt cheap. They buy the engine from an engine shop, and they do all the work in their backyard. They do all the work, and this dude do heavy haul, too. So they make a top-dollar custom Peterbilt. I don't know if y'all seen it or not. The guy drives an orange Peterbilt. It's a 379 Peterbilt. It's all custom. But like I said, I don't know how to um, pronounce the channel. I'll try to get that video up if I can... Uh, get good service out here. Andrew, what other schools do you recommend? I live in Miami and apparently Prime doesn't hire from South Florida. You live in Miami? Uh, uh, I don't think any company is going to hire you if you live below Lakeland, Florida. So, uh, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to use somebody else's address, another family member that lives above Lakeland, Florida, Florida and uh, you got to do it that way. Or you may have to just move out of Miami, you know, or rent out the house. But if you live below Lakeland, Florida, I don't think it's about anybody's gonna take you. Maybe car hauling, but you ain't got no experience. I'll see if I can find that video of them pulling trucks up the hill. It looks like they took the does and made a path through the woods up the side of the mountain and called it a road. I think I've seen one before on Jake and Al's video, but I'm not too sure. I can't remember. I think in one of his oil field videos, I may have seen it. Where is a good place to get tax information? Well, I'm not sure.
Okay, well, if the paychecks he showed you show uh, seven and 10,000 a week, uh, ask them, can you do uh, 2,300 or 2,400? I mean, if ten thousand is the has, he's taking thirty percent. That's three thousand dollars. So let's meet him in the middle. Say twenty three, twenty four, twenty five hundred flat a week. Still not making sense though. With uh, heavy hauls, he hauling the exact same thing. I I don't see how he could. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Is Stevens Transport a good company? I don't recommend Stevens Transport. Now, nah, Ape isn't the uh, the channel, but yeah, I'm subscribed to him. Uh, I know he talks about the engines and things like that. I'm already subscribed to him. how did I develop the mindset to do business um, that'll take some thought it didn't happen overnight uh, well first I went to school I went to college for business I was doing um, business administration at Vol State um, I was going to go to school for business, but what happened was uh, I changed my mind because I was trying to figure out what pays the most. So I left business administration to do computer engineering because, like I said, I left to see. <laughs> I left to do what pays the most, and computer engineering was paying top dollar. So I said, you know what, I'm going to switch my degree over to computer engineering. So I did that for uh, up to my junior year before I dropped out. And uh, did CD. I didn't drop out by choice. Uh, some people didn't want me to uh, succeed in college, so you know, I left college to uh, go with Prime Me. Am I making more as a truck driver than I would have been doing computer engineering? Uh, probably not. I mean, computer engineering probably would have started me off with. A hundred thousand dollars, so uh, I don't, I don't think so. You know, between computer engineering, computer science, programming, you know, doing Java, C plus plus, and all of that stuff, I don't know. I think computer engineering would have paid more, but trucking would have paid more in the long run. You know, I know Black Knight Conan. He does, uh, I guess you would call it computer science. He does programming though. And he's making uh, a decent living out there in Vegas with it. I do some programming on the side, but not for money. I still build computers. Most of the computers in my house is built by me. With that two-week home time, what can one net work in one month? Uh, you can add 10 rats. That's at like $2,000 a week. Well, now nah, you got to do like, what you got to do, 2500 a week? I do YouTube, so I, I managed to hit that 10 rats a week, so you know. I have friends in Jacksonville. You already changed your address. See how, oh, you just changed the address to see how it goes. Yeah, you may have to apply for somebody else besides Prime because you already applied with your original address. And I think the address got to be different on your license, too. Uh, I think it's the license. You got to go somewhere else and you got to get an apartment somewhere else and change the license that way. If they still let you do uh, P.O. boxes, you may can get them that way. But then again, you're going to need proof of um, like a water bill or some shit or however difficult the DMV makes it. Come to Tampa and rent a cheap trailer for 300 a month. 
We're going to the month and get a P.O. box at USF. What trailer is 300 a month? You talk about pneumatics? I know pneumatics up there go for like seven or 900 a month. Are they as low as 300 though? Uh, you already applied with your uh, friend's address, looking to get something local. Hey, it may work out. You plan to move to Jacksonville soon. Yeah, the reason for it is it's not really a lot of freight down in the Miami area for these mega carriers to go to. So they don't uh, they don't go down there. But um, the only hint that I could tell you is down in Miami and in that area, it's uh, companies that pull seafood. A produce out of that has got dedicated accounts so um, they take it up to the G8 in Georgia but still gonna need experience to even get with those people you said how many subscribers do I got approximately uh, over 20,000 how old am I 24 I should start my LLC first before I come to the oil field, right? Uh, you plan if you plan to be an owner operator, then yeah. See, I don't know what that noise is. I'm cooking coffee in the background. Halliburton is having a job fair on the 19th in Odessa. For anyone that doesn't have experience or a CDL, good company to start with an oil field. Yeah, if y'all ain't got no experience at all, then. I probably would go with Halliburton. Somebody told me they was making uh, $2,000 a week uh, fresh out of school with Halliburton. I think Halliburton trained them to get their CDL. So maybe that could be a good opportunity from what I understand. I don't know anything about it, but that's what I heard. You say you got a way to check VNs at the auction? Oh, I do too. I just forgot the uh, the website I use. It's the website I use to check VMs. I have a master's degree in business. Them devils won't hire me. Let me guess. I told you you need experience, huh? God damn, this cab over. Y'all see this crazy suit? They got a motherfucker got a cab over Hollis from Stream Heavy Hole. Gone now. Dude got a damn cab over. Y'all might can see it when he turn. That cab over so tiny. Y'all see that shit? That dude got the tiniest cab over I ever seen. We got about 12 axles on that though. My phone won't zoom in past that point. I'm at the rest area, by the way. Making all kinds of money with that cheap ass cab over. He probably spent about five thousand dollars. He probably got it for five rats. And uh he probably got it for five rats. And added uh money to it to get it to that point. You said do I got experience driving reefer? Yeah, I got about a year experience doing reefer. It was pretty good for me. The only thing I don't recommend is dry van. There's no skills required. You say, is it more money doing OTR or the oil field? Of course, there's more money in the oil field. I'm looking for the best jobs with no experience. Get a uh, suit and tie guys a phone call and see what the hell is going on. That's what I need to do. What's a good company to start with in the oil field? Anybody's going to pay you two or three thousand dollars a week? You just got to call around. What laptops do you recommend when you're not building one yourself? Uh, I don't build laptops. 
but uh which ones do I recommend whichever one got the uh, latest um, processor in it of course it's got to be an i7 processor I think they up to like uh, maybe the 9th gen right now this one is 7th gen 1845 a good company uh, I have no idea some people telling me it is some people telling me it ain't Does 1845, do they, why why everybody, why are y'all asking about 1845? Do they allow you to join at one year of experience or something? Do I need to get some trucks leased on to them and have people with one year of experience? What's going on with this 1845? Is it something I need to know about? Y'all asking me about, is 1845 the only company on Craigslist? Is that what's going on? How y'all know about 1845? Y'all let me know in on the secret. Y'all know something I don't know. I need to get some trucks over on 18. For everybody going 1845. Shit. Oh, they got a bunch of ads going on. Is that what it is? Cinnamon. My like, damn, y'all asking me about this 1845. Y'all know I never worked at 1845, right? So it's best to call a recruiter if y'all want to know something about the company. <laughs> Some damn good coffee. Been needing that. Might as well cook some damn lunch, too. What the hell we got going on? Shit, I ran out of food. Damn it, boy, I got to hit up the nearest Walmart. We ain't got no food. You know why we ain't got no food? Because I was supposed to be going home. That's why we ain't got no food. Might just stick with the subway. You say you think they bought Craigslist? God damn it. That's why y'all know about 1845, huh? What laptop am I using right now? I got a... It is the Sabre Pro 15 i7. Uh, runs about it may be like $1,500, but it's got the GTS 1060 in it. I wanted to get the one that's got the GTS 1080, uh, so I could do 4K videos, but it was like $3,500, so price needs to come down. Price needs to come down. But yeah, this laptop is probably about $1,500. It's a pretty good laptop, though. It does what I need needed to do. But it could be better. You know, it could definitely be better. It's best to put all your money into the processor first, then the graphics card second. Do I call Dispatch straight up or do I use the app? Yeah, I call Dispatch. I use the app too, but I call Dispatch. Because we got a lot of customers. Well, we don't got a lot of customers. We got three customers, so Dispatch can, uh, they'll know right there and there if they got a load available or not. You said my investing in stocks anymore? Uh, I haven't put my money into any stocks. But I do have stocks. I still got SPO. I got SPO when it was eighteen dollars. Uh, I haven't checked lately. Uh, it may be over a hundred dollars now. So, y'all don't know SPO is the uh, <clears throat> is the uh, plantation, and they got a lot of slaves over at SPO. So, and it's growing rapidly. Like I said, I got it when it was eighteen dollars when they bought Conway, and uh, they grew that company. Uh, they grew the plantation over at SPO. Yep, they grew the plantation. One thing about SPO, they got a lot of lease drivers. Um, the lease drivers over there, they're getting paid a dollar a mile. They're going 4,000 miles. They're getting $4,000 gross, $2,000 fuel bill, 
thousand dollar truck note they left with a thousand dollars so it's just been a company's rival but you know you know <clears throat> people don't do the math if you hit a second truck how much would what you want to profit for the additional truck That's a good question. My business advisor told me, he told me if I get a truck, not to drive the damn truck at all. He told me to immediately hire other drivers to uh, drive the truck. But I can't tell you the reason he told me that for, but it, it had a lot to do with taxes at the end of the year. You know, like I said, I can't tell you all the reason for it, but... Um, because it's like, like I said, it's, a, it's like a hidden business secret. But he told me to, uh, he told me not to drive the truck at all. To just put drivers in them. Now the truck, I still pay y'all good money. It ain't got nothing to do with how much you're going to make. You know, 30% of $10,000. It'll still pay y'all top dollar. It's just a tax thing. That's uh, like behind the, behind the door type activity. Maybe if y'all, uh, if there's some fleet owners out there that's got drivers, y'all would know what I'm talking about when I say uh, it's for tax purposes, right? I know Lil Sean knows, which is why he pay his drivers W-2 instead of 1099. I think he, I think, matter of fact, I think he told a lot of people the reason why he pays W-2 and not 1099. You said, how about a trainer you've been sitting since yesterday? Are we at the same company or something? We at the same company, and yeah, you can come find me. Now, no, I won't have no plantation going on in my company. <laughs> we're, not, we're not creating no plantation over here. Am I a game? I used to be, but I ain't got enough time no more. I really want to play the game. I wanted to be on that Fortnite. I'm not going to miss this this year's battle. I mean, this year's uh, Battlefield and uh, Call of Duty, man. I'm not going to miss it. I didn't miss damn near three years worth of Call of Duty playing. I used to be on Call of Duty every day. I used to be the guy that had the headset that would be playing goddamn, uh, what I used to play. I used to play Team Deathmatch. I used Team Deathmatch and... Uh, Search and Destroy. I played Search and Destroy so much, man. Goddamn, boy. But, hey, besides Search and Destroy, I had to play that damn Domination to rank up. You know, I had to get my goddamn 10th prestige. But I used to be the guy with the headset. Boy, you could. That wasn't a single game I wasn't talking shit to you in. Every motherfucking game. I'd be on that Search and Destroy talking so much shit. I used to win all the time, boy. I used to win all the time, boy. I used to take Call of Duty to the stream. I used to have goddamn, uh... Modified PS3, PS4, not PS4, but PS3. I used to have aimbot and all kind of shit, boy. I, modification like a motherfucker. Used to have me a goddamn JTED It's Boss Boy. Y'all couldn't tell me shit. I was cheating so motherfucking hard on that Call of Duty. I used to pay money. I used to JTED the It's Boss, put aimbot, all kind of shit on that motherfucker, boy. I talk so much shit. I have invincible mods, man. Woo. Y'all just don't know, boy. Used to have two headsets at the same time, just in case one went out, you can still hear me talking shit. <laughs> That's probably why my mom kicked me out the house. I used to be in my room. I used to have a motherfucking door locked up. I used to put shit behind the door like weights and shit. Put a padlock on the door, boy. Had a TV blast, and all you hear were gunshots two out the house all motherfucking day. <laughs> She said, I'm tired of this motherfucker. <laughs> you gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh, man. That's crazy. I want to come to the oil fields. I'm the only operator. All you got to do is apply. Just look on Craigslist and apply. I found my company on Craigslist. The company I'm going to is on Craigslist. You may have to go through a couple of pages, or you may have to just uh, spy on Craigslist for a couple of weeks, you know. 
When people say I have five trucks, how much they make per truck? Is it there? Is there an average? Oh, it depends what they uh, hauling. Depends what they hauling. You know, like for example, let's take uh, let's take Justin Lewis for example. You know, me and him work at the same company. He's got uh, he's got two trucks at this company. He got two trucks at another company. He just bought a fifth truck, a uh, Peterbilt, but it's getting a rebuilt done right now. And uh, at this company, I want to say for the week, his trucks average between, uh, let me see, let's do, he averages between 16000 and maybe 24000 a week between his two trucks. And he, he pays for his trucks in cash, so. Uh, yeah. However much expenses he got out of that, you know. If you connect fifteen to two thousand dollars a week with a driver, you're okay. Yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. Passive income is definitely the plan. The, the reason I don't want to put a driver in my truck when I first started is because I don't know I don't know anything about the truck you know I want to test it out make sure it's not gonna break down even though I got the maintenance account to do it I don't want to put somebody in the truck and they broke down every other day I didn't experience that that shit ain't fun you know it's not fun at all unless you're gonna play my this is what Jake and now told me to do back before I uh, when I first got in the oil field talking about hiring a driver he said, make sure you will uh, offer them breakdown pay, you know, offer them, like as I said, breakdown pay, and make sure you can put them in a, make sure you can put them in a hotel when the truck break down, and make sure you deal with the truck and not them, so, that was a good idea. What truck would I get? It's going to be a used truck. The truck I'm looking at right now got a DD15, and uh, where well, it's two trucks. I want to go back home and buy that Freightliner is what I want to do, but I highly doubt it's still there. But we'll see. We'll see. It's been a month, so I, I highly doubt it's still there. It would need a rebuild, which would take a whole another month. I know I know it's mechanics that can turn it around in five days. I, uh, that's too damn fast. You ain't, you ain't. I'm not trying to find no mechanic that can turn a goddamn rebuild in five days. That's crazy as hell. That's going that, that's that's the mechanic that ain't, ain't offered no type of warranty. <laughs> that's too damn fast. You doing rebuilds in five days? Oh no, I don't want nothing to do with that. I need my goddamn engine rebuilt nice and slow. Take your time on this motherfucker. Five days, that's crazy as hell. They got them throwing, you know, you know what a five day rebuild look like? Go stand in the shop and watch somebody do a rebuild in five days and see what they look like. Ain't taking no time. If you had $250,000 cash, would you invest in the trucking or something else? On the multiple trucks seem like a what to say a huge liability. Uh, said a rebuild can be done in two days. Uh, huge liability. At two hundred and fifty thousand dollars cash, I would go C Corp, and yes, I probably would put it in the trucking industry. But I would probably put all my money in the trailers. That's what I would probably do. Put it all in the trailers. And just start leasing trailers out left and right. Even how owner operators pull the trailers with freight, and I probably get contracts that way, cause that'll that'll knock all that liability shit down, you know. Put it all in the trailers. How the drivers, with their own authority, come and pay the cargo insurance too. C Corp. That way, when one of them drivers roll the fuck over, they're not taking my shit. C Corp style. It wouldn't be an LLC. DD15 did not get 2012. Uh, 
Well, that's a bad year manufacturer defect for the oil system. I learned that first. So, yeah, it won't be 2012. Why well, get a used truck when you can make all kinds of money with a new truck? I don't have new truck money. A uh, new truck costs like what, a hundred and twenty, hundred fifty thousand dollars? I don't got it. I don't got it. I don't got a hundred fifty thousand. That's how much a new truck costs. A new truck. I don't know if y'all know this or not. Uh, a new truck does not cost eight thousand dollars down. You know, yeah, that's how much the down payment costs. That's not the, the truck cost. I be watching on operators. They be like, they be having these breakdowns. They be talking about the breakdown, like this guy that just blew a new head, for example. The mechanic charged him ten thousand dollars. Basically, they need a whole new engine rebuilt, right? He's under the impression that he could take this ten thousand dollars and put it down on a brand new truck. And I'm telling him, a a, a brand new truck is like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Your problem only costs ten thousand dollars. It don't cost a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, man, but. If I can get a brand new truck, I'm going to have no problems. I got a warranty this, warranty that. I'm like, dog, yeah, and it's $150,000. What are you talking about? $10,000. You you rebuilding your engine. And the, guy, the guy's probably going to give you a warranty on it. But it's not making sense to them, you know. All the way I would get a new truck is if you guarantee that you're going to have, you're, gonna, you're starting to, um, what we call a, a plantation is what we, that's, that's what, you get drivers to drive the damn truck forever. That's plantations, what we call it. <clears throat> I'm not starting a plantation, so, yeah. That's really the only way that I can see that new truck situation working out. I average 4K a week. Will I make more in the fields? Oh, uh, no. Not if you're making 4K a week. Are you talking about as a company driver? What is C Corp? Uh, C Corporation? We're talking about uh, the structure of a business. So you got C Corp, you got LLC, and you got S Corp. Uh, text message. I go 07 or older, no DPF, no DEF. Yeah, that's what I was going to do. Uh, the freight line I was looking at. 20, 20. I missed my train here. Got to answer the train. He's, he said, did I ever get a load? Why the keyboard ain't popping up? No, I do not have a load. CND. Am I going to stick with the Volvo? This ain't my truck. This this is the suit and tie guys Volvo. I'm a company driver. Yeah, like I said, the uh, truck I was looking at was a 2012 Freightliner, 800,000 miles on it. <clears throat> There's no point in me even getting the oil sample or even checking out the engine. What's the point? I already know I need an overhaul. It's just pointless. It's just a waste of money. If you get the truck, go ahead and have it overhaul. You know, it's a Detroit Sister Series, and I already got it priced out. People can do it for about 10000 Some people are talking 8000 yeah, just have it overhauled. What's the point? What's the point in bringing it out here trying to see if you can get it up to a million miles? If I check Penske website for used trucks, yeah, somebody else told me to go to uh, Penske. Apparently, Penske is supposed to list uh, everything that's wrong with the trucks. Plus, they give you a maintenance record, too. That's another reason he was telling me to go to Penske. But, uh, like I said, in the truck over 700,000 miles, <laughs> I expect to uh, rebuild it pretty soon. Now the truck sales. Man, I looked at now the truck sales, but um, uh, I looked at now the truck sales, but they don't have the uh, Columbias and the uh, the older Columbias on there no more. The 2007 or oldest. Then damn near sold all of those. The option is good though. What you know about the company Cisco in the fields? Uh, I recommend Cisco, but Cisco ain't gonna take you unless you got an oil field experience. I think you need at least six months in the oil field. Somebody want me to come work at the plantation. New truck has a two-year warranty now. Yeah, that's the uh, 2019s, though. But I think you can get a standard warranty on them new trucks, and you still, you still can uh, probably get five years out of it. 
Yeah, the only new truck I would actually buy if I was to buy a new truck has got to be a, a glider kit. And it's probably got to come from Fitzgerald. Otherwise, I'm not interested. He said, it's fuck your money out of the game. He ain't made no re Fuck your money been out of the game. He, he, he's retired. The oil field retired him. The oil field. Well, I say the oil field kicked him out. And uh, the women is kind of retired him uh, from trucking. But I think he's, he's, he's got a job somewhere around Texas. Have I thought about starting a holding company? No, nah, I don't need one. I don't have no use for it. You said eight hundred thousand miles. Forget about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the twenty, the uh, two thousand twelve Freightliner. It's got eight hundred thousand miles. Like I said, I was gonna rebuild the engine though. Or you can just buy a new engine and put it in there. Either one. Yeah, I didn't plan to take the truck straight to the oil field and start trying to make money with it. I already know it would need engine work. Penske don't deal with first time buyers. Oh, uh, they don't, but they do deal with, um, from what I understand, they do deal with people that have uh, been in business for, I believe, two years or more. What type of warranties them re rebuilds you talking about come with? Depending on who do it, depends on the warranty. Uh, if it's done from like, uh, like a Detroit manufacturer, some of them offer two to four year warranties on them engines. You know, if you go to like a Latino shop or just a regular mom and pop truck show, I mean, uh, shop, they might not give you a warranty at all. So it really just depends on who do it, what they offer. You say you died when I said, I'm fucking money here, Amazon packages in the trunk of his car. You never know, man. He said he was doing Amazon. I mean, shit, look at me and shit. That's they got Amazon flex. I mean, I, when I order stuff from Amazon, Amazon pull up in the car in front of my house, they... Open a truck and they got my package and they bring it up to me. Hey man, they got Amazon right there in Memphis. I, I thought that's what he was doing. He said he working at Amazon six hundred a week or something. I don't know. I mean, he had all the stuff in the back seat, so I figured, you know, it ain't no damn semi truck and maybe he doing all this truck. I don't know. Is there a certain way you want your engine done up especially specifically for the oil field? Oh uh, yeah it is. Um I swat on YouTube left a comment on one of my videos. He was like, go look up the uh bully dog system or the tuner. And um I finally figured out what he was talking about. And um I'm gonna get one of those. Then I'm gonna go to the diesel doctor and have him uh, <clears throat> work on it up there in uh, Effingham, Illinois. And um, I really wanted to go down to uh, PDI tuning, but um, with the DD15 engine, it's not much. It's not much that they can really do with it, you know. So I'm kind of skeptical about buying this DD15 engine just because it's. It's not really a good engine for trucking. It's, it's not much they can do as modification wise to it. But I may still get it. If you remove the DPF system, can DOT find out? Um, yes and no, it depends how you do it. Um, if you do ECM programming, and that's pretty much where they don't, if they don't remove anything, any parts from underneath the truck or underneath the engine, and you just do ECM programming, uh, it's against the law for um, the DLT officer to plug into your truck. So uh, unless you tell them you did a DEF delete, there's no way for them to know. Now, if you do the DEF or DPF method to where they um, putting straight pipes through the goddamn, uh, what part is that, the... Uh, 
think it's the exhaust system on the DPL field, so they put in straight pipes too, where you can see that shit. Then, yeah, you're looking at a huge fine, and it's just a matter of time before you get caught. Do I watch Red Viking trucking at all? Yeah, I'm subscribed to him. Um, I wish when he had came out to the oil field, I know he quit his job and came to the oil field to uh, somebody, I guess the owner operator called him about a job. I wish he would have hit me up, man. It's, it's, he could have came to the Soon Tigers and he would have been guaranteed some of that money now. But I think he found the fleet on off Craigslist. And uh, I guess the deal with being funny was showing him uh, paychecks. But um, yeah, he got the experience, man. He got more than two years of experience. He could have he could have came to a company like this, or it's other companies that's just like this that would have paid him that two, three racks. You know, it's just not my company. There's other companies that drive new trucks like this. But yeah, I watch them. I'm subscribed. I got the deal on tuning the DD15. Is that right? Amazon Flex pays like 55 to 90 bucks a load. I was there, how much they paying to do Flex? I tuned my 60 series with a bullet dog. It's legit. Yeah, I know it's going to be legit. I know, I know it's legit. But you got a 60 series. I'm talking about DD15. I know it works on DD15s and cat engines and uh, some of the Cummins motors. But a DD15, it still work on them, but it ain't much they can do. It ain't too much power they can put into the goddamn weak-ass engine. I don't want it tuned to what point in two months the goddamn engine going to blow. You know. Am I missing something? Who is Vinny? Do you use paper laws or e-laws? I'm on e-laws. And how do people get around working more hours? Do you stick with the 10-hour reset? Uh, what do you mean, how do we get around working more hours? I don't do a 10-hour 10, 10 reset. I do an 8-hour reset. In the oil field, we don't run out of hours. Maybe if you're doing sandbox, because you got to do way more driving. But us pneumatic drivers, we, we never out of time. Especially if you're running in Texas with Texas rules, Texas e-log rules. You shouldn't run out of time. You said USA is BS. USA what? USA Trucks? Trucking Company? You said, am I going to drive my truck just like I drive a suit and tie got truck? No, because it's got a DD-15 engine. The one that I'm thinking about buying, the truck ain't strong enough to be. This Volvo 13 is way stronger than that DD15 engine. This DD15 engine is probably equivalent to like a Cummins with only 400 horsepower. I'm talking about a DD15 at 500 horsepower. You know, it's a weak ass engine. Now, maybe tune and make it do some other shit, but from what I understand, it's a weak engine with a lot of problems. What do you think about the D12 Volvo engine? I don't recommend any 12 liter engines. You mean DD13? The Volvo I got is a DD13. It's a pretty strong engine, but hey, this thing is modified. I think I think they done put a, a different type of turbo in this Volvo. It's just a modified truck I'm here. That's why it's able to pull so fast. Man, this thing is, this damn Volvo is boosting all the way up to 45 PSI. The D12 Volvo to uh, 2006. I don't. Rec I don't recommend Volvo engines at all. Yeah, this is a good Volvo engine, but understand when this thing break down, we got a Volvo dealership that all our trucks got to go to, and they make the drivers suffer too. So if anything go wrong with this engine, you could be out of work from this company for two, three weeks. You be at the house. They make you suffer. They they not gonna switch you to another truck. You are gonna be suffering. 
So I don't, I, uh, I can't know. Oh, this thing got to go to the manufacturer, the Volvo, got them dealership. They got to work on it. Hell no. I mean, I ain't had the experience because my truck ain't broke down, but. been out here a week and it feels like a month. Is that right? I ran on coffee cream. How long did it take me to, to earn as much as I do? Uh, maybe a year. I say it took me a year. Uh, off and on though. It's, my income more stable than it was when I uh, had leased the truck from quality, but when I left night after a year of experience, I went to, uh, yeah, I got a refrigerator. I went to a company called Interstate, and I got put on the load board where I could put my own loads. At that time, I was making the two to $3,000 a week, but it didn't last too long. It didn't last too long. I had a late load, and they started tripping, and yeah. Then I just went to uh, two horrible companies after that, which was uh, Road Runner and Great Wide. Or Cardinal Logistics, two horrible companies. Then I came to the oil field, and you know, my first company in the oil field was pretty good. Uh, when I was running sandbox, I was making the two, three thousand dollars. It's not till December when I got that goddamn Peterbilt, man. That what was that three? I think it was a 387 Peterbilt. Man, that thing had so many problems. And shout out to the guy that's driving that Freightliner, the uh, the Freightliner that I was in at my last company. Uh, one of my subscribers got that truck now, and uh, hey, he only got to add two gallons of oil a day is what he got to add in that engine to work. I don't recommend that company at all, and the reason for it is unless you're an owner operator and you got your own equipment, if you're using that company's equipment, they don't do no mechanic work, there's no reason that the guy should have to add two gallons of oil. I thought, the, I thought when the truck broke down, they were supposed to take the truck to get it rebuilt. They never did it. They never they never rebuilt the engine. They had another guy, he got to put two gallons of oil in the motherfucker a day. And I know it's leaking oil like crazy, but I mean, come on, man. Don't you... I, at this point in time, there's no point in even rebuilding the engine. They just need a whole engine swap now. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> Long as the goddamn truck making money, they don't give a fuck. I don't see how he doing, man. And that's not all to it besides adding that oil, man. He got to constantly hit the override button and just all kind of shit, man. Now, I can't tell. If I tell the company, everybody going to go apply and then, goddamn, it, that's the type of company that will retire you from the oil field. And don't think you can take them trucks through any type of DOT scale, man. Oh, my God. You gonna be a real outlaw. You go to that last company I was with. I know all about it. <laughs> you think I ever went through a damn DOT scale? You may fuck around and break down on the scale. <laughs> and you're leaking out 24/7. Oh, you leaking out 24/7. Every time you start the truck, it's got zero psi. Yeah, where you go, all you hear is air. As soon as you get out the truck, you just hear air going all over the place. Air bags got holes in them. Air line leaking. Glad hand leaking. I mean, come on. They don't give a fuck. Don't even bother going to the goddamn mechanic shop with their truck. They ain't going to do nothing but pull in there. They're going to close the damn door. And they're going to, in about 10 hours, they're going to open the door back up, pull your truck back out, and pretend like they did some work to it. You're going to go down the street and have the exact same problem. The only way they'll fix that truck is if it, if the truck has to be towed back to the yard in order for them to put some work into it. That's the only way you're going to get anything done to the truck. Unless it's something simple like change the light bulb out, you know, that type of stuff. Yeah, man, see, see, it's one of them companies that was around back in, uh, they've been around for a long time, since 2012. They survived the oil field dropping. And the reason they survived the oil field dropping is because how they treat their trucks. They put no money into it. 
I mean, the trucks are paid off. They don't do no mechanics work. The only, the only, the only work they're going to do is replacing the tire. That's probably it. They don't care. They ain't worrying about no DOT inspections. Because the thing about it, the reason they don't care, if you get pulled over and you get a DOT inspection, it's on you. They don't know. So what the fuck do they care? It's on you. It's your points. You, you the one getting the PSA points through the roof. Not them. I mean... Yeah, you gotta take the crap back to them, but where do they come? You say it's somewhere, it's on a, it's on a CSA school. You must not know how these guys rock. These guys, <laughs> when a company go downhill, they change the name, get the authority, and they write back in. They don't even leave the building. They didn't hear like three. The company has been, been changed three different names, same building. They hear the water company guy rolled the fuck over. The DOT came, did an investigation, shut the company down. They renamed the motherfucker and changed the name of the building. They still, still rocking. They don't give a flying fuck. <laughs> DOT ain't got nothing on them. You like, damn man, you how did how did they get away with the logbook situation? I ain't figured out to this day. I have absolutely no idea. No idea. I don't know how they do it. I don't know. Like when they gave me that damn e law system, I was like, what the hell is the e law system? Y'all y'all doing laws now? I don't I've been here eight months. They ain't never said nothing about a goddamn law. I don't know what the fuck going on. Did they uh, did they decide to go green now all of a sudden. I didn't know what was going on. I so I realized the e law system that they gave me was just for decoration. <laughs> But from what I understand now, they on uh, they use keep trucking now, so I guess I guess DOT got to them a little bit. You said what city? They uh they in Texas, they in the oil field. You gotta go back to my old videos to see the city. This the main city in the oil field, but that ain't gonna help you find a company though. How long do I plan on doing oil tankers? You talking about pneumatics? Oh, uh, I don't got no time limit on you, really. I mean, I'm finna switch over to sandbox in a minute, but uh, I probably was. I'd probably still be doing pneumatic in the future. I probably bounce back and forth between them. How much do you usually make per 100 miles? Oh, per 100 miles. It varies. I say between between seven hundred and sixteen hundred. It depends. If I do um let's say I do two forty mile runs, that could pay uh fourteen hundred dollars. Or I might could do one run over a hundred miles or just a hundred miles, you may only pay eight hundred dollars. So it really just depends. You said per hundred miles, so you know. What do sandbots pay half for Wait, what? Why sandbox? That's half for the pay. Cause there's some sandbox companies out here that's uh, paying the same thing as pneumatic. Bet you won't read this comment. Somebody said West Texas. I need to call it soon, tag guys, y'all. I've been on here two hours and twenty-four minutes. The phone ain't even tried to ring. I actually been sitting here for two hours, 25 minutes. I can't, it's been that long, goddamn. Soon time guys ain't even almost tried to call. I need to wrap it up, y'all. Let's see what these soon time guys talk about. What's the best kind of trucking to get into? I would say, um, flatbed, tanker, car hauler. I'm really interested in the car hauler. Yeah, there's some other types of uh, trailers that I can't name that uh, pays high in the oil field, but that is, don't require any special skills. What well am I running? I'm not running any wells right now. But anyways, I'm going to wrap it up, guys. I got to get on the phone with the suit and tie, guys. I don't, I don't know what, what the... 
I don't like sitting for free, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video. And I guess we'll keep this one up. Oh, yeah, check Facebook. All right. I'll check Facebook. Hey, Y'all follow me on Instagram, Chasing Andrew. YouTube channel. All right, y'all take care.